You know what I think about us, the three of us, what we could be. I think about it all the time. Please, it's terrible. No, it's not. I know June, she's my friend. I care about her. How's your day going? You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Her father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass. Welcome to Above the Garage, a Nick and June, The Handmaid's Tale podcast. Hi, friends. Welcome to our deep dive into season two, episode five, which is entitled Seeds. This episode is intended for longtime viewers of the show because we're going to talk about the episode in the context of the show to date. So it will be full of spoilers. Let's do our round of introductions. Hi, I'm Ginger. Hi, I'm Claudia. Hi, I'm Scarlett. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Kate. Okay. Who's got deep dive stuff? Oh, I have a lot. Oh, <sighs> yay. Yes. I have stuff too. So I was thinking about, um, you know, when Lydia, well, with the scene where um, Fred and Nick are outside and Fred is giving Nick, Nick the death stares about being the mm-hmm. father. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, when do we think Aunt Lydia knows that Nick is the father? Because the aunts always know who the real fathers are so they can mark them in their books. So I'm just curious what you guys think. Like, I don't at this point, I don't think she realizes that Nick is the father. No, I don't think so either. Not yeah. not yet. Yeah. I don't know how do they do this because yeah. uh, are the wives telling the aunts who's the father? I, I don't I, I yeah. honestly think that they uh okay, I know they're they're anti-science, but I think they do have like DNA tests. Yeah. It's so simple. All you do is spit. Yeah. And it goes into it. They, they have computers. We see the men walking with computers. They have the databases. 23 and me was around. So was like genealogy. <laughs> so uh, that was all around. So I wonder if they just like, honestly, it's so weird, but maybe every citizen that is from Gilead has to spit and have their DNA looked at. I mean, maybe I believe this. Is that what makes sense though? Because they're trying to make sure there's no like you know, incest yeah. or anything. And people could obviously lie. Or if you have like uh, genetic uh, chromosomal deficiencies that they might not want you as a handmaid, if you're going to pass that on. I mean, yeah. even though it happens because of the pollution factor, but I'm saying like, if you already had it in your family, they probably would be like, okay, well you, you're not good breeding stock. You can be a Martha or, yeah. you know, something. So I, yeah. I, they don't explain it, but that's, my head cannon is that I like that theory. it's such a simple thing to do it doesn't even require a blood they're test. only against things until they're useful to them you know exactly because right, they have hospitals so it's not yeah. like they're totally anti-science mm-hmm. they'll use whatever you know? they need right so because how would they ever truly know and, and in the testaments they do make a point to say that they know who you know the official father is and who the biological father is and right you wouldn't know that unless there was a test anybody could tell you something right and you know inbreeding would still occur yeah um so i I think they know yeah when the baby is born probably is when lydia knows yeah at that scene i had the notes that nick is always nice to all women even serena later in uh when when the kidnapping of baby holly happens if you can say that um and he's really nice to Lydia there. And it's the first time I really noticed that. Uh, he's always mm. so nice. And it, it yeah. kind of bothers me. I'm, I'm ready for him to not be nice too. Yeah. Something. I noticed it with Serena the whole time. And of course, with uh, all the Marthas and stuff. But I never really looked at his relationship to Lydia. We don't see much of it. Yeah. Like- In season four, you, uh, you have to... I think this was the only other seen with them together talking so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and they seem to have known each other pretty yeah I mean it's just so funny how we don't see what's going on um when June isn't involved but you know that there's things going on you know that he knows Lydia like especially um in season four episode three when she approaches the van you know and Mm-hmm. It's like don't worry and she's trying to calm him down like June will yeah. be okay think of me as her guardian angel like she wouldn't um do that unless she knew they were in a relationship and cared for each other so she obviously you know has 
seen it or spoken to him. I don't know. I hate that we don't, there's so much we don't see. Cause I would love to know, obviously like, it seems like, and we can get off on a tangent on this, but yeah. <laughs> obviously it seems like everybody knows about Nick and June. And obviously Lydia seems to know stuff, but it, I just want to know, like, how much does she know? Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. She just seems to know all. I mean, yeah, she really she does. does. She's all knowing Aunt Lydia. Do you think she was speaking to him in 4-3 when she's like, I'll take care of her with the eyes fan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think absolutely. so, for sure. Why would you talk to any other commander that way? Like, oh, don't worry. She's in good hands. Yeah. They would mm-hmm. not and her, vo- yeah, her voice gets very gentle, mm-hmm. which seems like reassuring. She's- for him. She was yeah. genuine. Yeah. She was really telling him to not worry. So but she's about to torture her. So yeah, <laughs> not, not, not her, but. Yeah. yeah. Any other commander would not care anything to hear right. anything yeah. about what's going on with yeah. June. Yeah. And mm-hmm. she would not have to reassure them that mm-hmm. don't worry. Think of me as her guardian angel. Like they'd be like, I don't care. Shoot her. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they don't yeah. care. And speaking of commander um, in the scene, in this episode where Fred and price are talking and Fred says that Nick is overdue for a promotion. I like immediately was thinking about how Fred uses promotions for Nick to punish him all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And here we are. Mm-hmm. He's, oh, he's getting promoted, AKA we're going to marry him off to a child. Mm-hmm. And then we later see, oh, he gets promoted to commander because he's punishing him for helping June, which again, he's helping June here. And then he gets, you know, promoted to commander where he's sent to the front lines to die. Mm-hmm. So I, it's like, you know, promotions are supposed to be a good thing, but in this case, it's a punishment. Yes. Yeah. Right. Always. Because even in this episode, he says, oh, we should send him to Washington, which I know, I know things are different in Gilead, but I mean, in the United States, Washington usually means military, you know? So I'm not sure if that's what he was implying when he said that here. Like, Well, from what we see of DC and Gilead, it's shit too, because the handmaids have their mouths, you know, shut. It's worse, yeah. 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 But I wonder if when he says Washington here, if he's like insinuating, put him in the military so that he can, again, go to the front lines, you know? Yeah, I think he just wants him far away. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's the goal. But but Joe says in that interview that he gets Nick promoted at the end of season two so that he can go to the war and die. So like you said, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's been confirmed by him. I mean, yeah. it was more like start of season three, but yeah, I guess. Right. If we are at the military thing now, I realized that uh, Price during the Prevaganza says about honoring the most valiant guardians, they salute their victories on the field of battle. So that's actually the first time that we get to hear about Nick being in the military before, because I Mm -hmm. think it was insinuating that, that all those guys deserved the promotion because they were in the um, military before and then helped out later um, during Gilead. I mean, we still don't know exactly what happened and we can assume that Nick is not, has not been a field commander or something like (laughs) that uh, during the war. Let's hope not. He he can't be anything other than a soldier. It's a just foot a soldier. Foot soldier yeah. Like in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, but it's uh, it was striking to me that we actually heard it there, and everyone in the room heard it. So June had at least an inkling about that <laughs> he had to be there. I think it's possible, were it me and June's place there, that like there was a lot more going on, and she might not have latched on to that. Yeah, probably. But, but she's yeah. smart, and she would have eventually, like like a couple weeks later. Yeah, probably we can assume that all of the men that turned to uh, what turned to guardians later had to be a part of the battles before. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. The first thing I have in my notes was the thing that. Nick gets the letters here, but we have talked about it, I think, in at least two other episodes. I mean, this is the point where he shows us that he knew about the letters and then he takes them. Yeah, I think it's relevant. Talk about the Jezebel's letters. I love them. Go ahead, Claudia. Yeah, I mean, we see that he's obviously not questioning that she has them. Right. He's just worried that she burns them. Yes. And then he he's just taking them for safekeeping. 
I know we, we know what happens later with them, but uh, at least this this moment was really sweet that he just um, he could have thrown it out or something like that. But he I mean, anybody would have thrown them out because yeah, yeah, um, yeah. they're not you know it's... he could have burned them too. Right. I mean, it's not necessarily wrong. Like yeah. normally, I feel like maybe he'd be like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's <laughs> not risk our lives over these letters. But he's not because he's like, you know what? These letters mattered so much to you. You put them away for this long and I'm not going to let you do that. Yeah. I mean, he probably knew um, that maybe wanted to do something with that anyway. Right. So being part of maybe he. Yeah. Because the way that he gets them out later showed that he um, knew what had to happen. With them. Right, he knew what they were intended for. There's nothing else yeah. that could have happened, though. I, like, I want, I do believe he's part of Mayday, but I also think that I feel like he's doing it more for June. Like, I really feel like he's helping June when she can't. Like right now, like when June's down, he's picking her up and he's like taking care of these letters and he's getting them out. He knows there's nothing else that's going to happen to these letters. I think he would have never taken care of the letters uh, if she was still in her right mind then yeah, exactly. because that was the thing she wanted to do and he would never take it away from her right she has to do her own stuff yeah we're still in season two and i think that we've only seen him help june you know that's what he's attached to that's his purpose but i think that after you know the seasons progressed we get to see that he's doing more and i think it had to do with the fact that he was gone in season three and she pulls the angel's flight I guess, I guess maybe that pushed him to do to do more so that's kind of like my headcanon with that my headcanon is he's always been doing more but this is June's yeah. show so we don't yeah. see it no yeah yeah because even realistically I mean he takes the letters to Canada he didn't have to do that like I don't I don't mm -hmm. think she even asked him to do that you know yeah so I I do agree that I think there's little things but we don't see it as much until like season four I mean, the only thing we did see was the fact that he became an eye to get rid of some commanders, at least them. Yeah, and he did that. He got rid of um, Guthrie's, who sucked. Yeah, yeah. and, and Kashimita. Yeah. yeah, both. I mean, he's doing like stuff. He's always he's been trading with Beth. So just, I think that he has been doing a lot, and it's not shown because it's June's show. But yeah. when it came to June and these letters and. He just picked up the baton, you know, and he's right. like, I know what needs to happen. I'm going to take these out. I'm not even going to stress you out about it and tell you what I'm doing. I'm just going to take these letters and I'm going to get them out. And he did. And just it's so their dynamic too, with like um, price, it's always been so intriguing. I'm kind of sad that he died in that bombing. <laughs> it's weird. It's so <laughs> weird, I right? do actually, I feel like there was more there. That I we do too. You know born. what? You know what? My head canon was that they were planning on killing off Fred earlier. And then they decided to keep him around. So they totally like jumped shark and they <laughs> were like, okay, we're going to actually just do it this way. Instead of killing Fred in this season, we're going to, you know, wait later. Well, they did. They said that. They said that. They did. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. No, he was supposed to die in an earlier season, but they liked him so much. They kept him around. They've said that in more than one interview. So then Price got the axe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But but it's good that he got uh, killed off because um, would you imagine that Nick got sent off to another household or another yes, position? I mean, I mean that would thing. be no. yes. I always just am curious about their relationship, though. Yeah, it is totally. intriguing because it obviously went way back to you know before, and then they always act like obviously they act like they don't know each other because Nick's mm -hmm. an undercover eye, and they can't. But they both act like oh yeah I barely know this guy and you can tell they do especially in that episode when um after the bombing when Fred is in uh, yeah, so. the hospital room and they ask him oh because they can see Nick's look on his face when they tell him that uh Price died yeah and yeah. then it and then Allison Putnam's like oh do you know him well and then Nick has to turn around way and be like no I not well you know and it's yeah. a lie you could tell it really affected him so I'm always like yeah, the, my next point would be uh, the fact that Serena was raging so hard about Aunt Lydia being like a bit superior <laughs> and she gets to write and she gets to think. <laughs> um, and I think this 
pushes her a little more uh, into the fact that she's going crazy in, uh, I think it was episode seven, yeah, that she starts to break the rules and takes things in her own hands because she was just so fucking mad about the mm. fact that she has so little power even mm-hmm. between some women. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's jealous. I mean, that, she's, she's jealous she's at so Aunt jealous. Lydia too. She's at not everyone. <laughs> yeah, at, mm. yeah, at everyone. Yeah, even at Naomi, she's jealous that she <laughs> she gets that baby and she does. Yeah, yeah. And we we see her uh, looking at Lydia who's writing down stuff and uh, two episodes later she gets to hold the pen and yeah yeah my thing is just serena's irredeemability like uh, <laughs> this is what i talk about forever for the rest of my life and always well is that this episode is the absolute like end of any chances for serena with me it's pure evil yeah um what i had for deep dive was uh you guys were talking about pre june's face when she's realizing what's happening in Prevaganza kind of made me think of June's face when she's talking to Luke in season four, but kind of not trying to show emotion, but you can mm-hmm. see the emotion written all over her face. Like when I saw it, I was like, wait a minute, this seems very familiar. So I saw it twice. And then I went back to the Luke and June conversation. And at least I saw it. I don't know if, you know, you guys saw it the same way. About meeting up with Nick, right? About yeah, meeting up with nine. Nick four nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in 409. I had the drink parallel, you know, when Fred and Nick are talking in this episode, you know, and Fred hands him the drink. And then that made me think of the Lawrence conversation in season four and uh, oh, yeah. the episode Chicago, 405, if I'm not mistaken. And then the dynamic in, in the Lawrence and the conversation is different because they're, they're sitting sideways talking. And usually that kind of signifies kind of like a little bit of intimacy when you're talking about intimate stuff it's easier for you to talk that way instead of talking face to face and obviously that's a conversation when Nick says you know I can't move on which is Mm -hmm. you know kind of heavy that he's accepting that to to Lawrence um and it also parallels to the fact that I don't remember which episode I don't know if it's about I think it's a finale when June goes to visit Fred yeah. And she also asks for a drink and they're having a drink. And um, it's Fred also who serves the drinks to June. Does she, um, she does drink there, doesn't she? Yeah, she, she drink. does drink. Yeah. I think. I mean, I know she cheers. Yeah, because Nick never takes a drink in this episode. And then in season four, in uh, 403, he doesn't take a drink either. Mm-hmm. But then I think June does take a drink in the finale. I know she at least does. She does. Cheer. She drinks it, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we never see Nick drink, and I think you mentioned to put it in the deep dive because of his brother. The reason why he doesn't do it is just probably because of Josh, right? Right. We, ne- we never get to hear it, what happened to him, but we know that they wanted to put it out there that he dra- uh, drank himself to death. Yes. Well, and then they chose not to, but we yeah. don't know why they did that. But but we, they did put it out there that... That he was an alcoholic, yes. yes. Yeah. He was still alive at the time when Price um, targeted Nick and Nick said that he was drinking Jim Beam, I think, with his morning coffee. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I see it. I see it. Is, that definitely could be it, but I also think it's a control thing. Like he's trying, yeah. to, he's trying to stay in control and not be influenced by alcohol. So it's like a power move. I feel yes. like it's very much both. I don't know. I feel like yeah. even Nick, yeah. I'm, I, I can't see Nick drinking outside of Gilead, even though I've written that into fan fiction. I cannot see Nick. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't see him being a big drinker for both of those reasons. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Because in Gilead, he can't, he keeps that mask on all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, it's very rare to see him lose it. And I think, again, that's why, and one of the reasons why he doesn't drink because alcohol lowers your inhibitions. Right. And he doesn't he needs to keep everything like close to him, you know, so he's he keeps that mask on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can't afford to lose control. Yeah, which is what alcohol does. Right. And the, and the script that I can't remember if we fully said this, just to explain the script that changed was in the Nick and June, um, the Jezebel. break up, break up, break up in Jezebel's. Yeah, he says instead of just saying I'm. <laughs> I'm Nick Blaine and I'm from Michigan. He says, um, my name is Nick Blaine and I let my brother drink himself to death, right? Yeah. Is that correct? 
Yeah. yeah, he says I'm mm-hmm. Nick Blaine. I my favorite season is summer. Oh yeah, that, then, I like that part too. And then I let my brother drink himself to death. Yes, but I love that his favorite season is summer and his favorite girl is June. I know. Yes, and I also would have liked to learn more about Josh, but maybe they're gonna. I don't know. I don't see Josh coming back, but if he does, it'd be cooler if he does. Yeah. I, I thought a lot about the the love is patient, love is kind Bible verse. That's my favorite Bible verse. And again, like it's just I it's have like a whole episode on this. It's sure. like the epitome of June and Nick. And I just think of it like obviously Nick is patient. He's kind. We mentioned he's kind to all women, even Serena and you know, women who really don't deserve it. Yeah. Or then it says it does not dishonor others, not self-seeking. And I think of how he always is with the fact that. June is married like she has a husband and Nick has never ever once shown any kind of jealousy or like Mm -hmm. anything like it's like he fully accepts that he knows he's not in his mind like he knows he's not her number one the one she would he doesn't think she would choose him so like I just done the opposite he's sought out her husband and gave him messages of her safety and taken messages of his love back to her like there couldn't mm-hmm. be anything more selfless yeah and in that whole scene like he's the most selfless person like I've ever seen in my life but then you also have him like helping her escape like with the whole Boston Globe situation and you know like in his head he's thinking like she's going to go back to it her husband who's going to raise my child yeah. you know so it's just and then again she does go to Canada in season four where he knows yeah. that Luke is raising his child. And, you know, I just, I love that this is just so, uh, it's so. But then he finds out she loves him. Yeah. And then, like, again, like where he looks at June when he says, endures all things. And I just think about the fact that, like, this episode in particular really was, I mean, this season as a whole, I feel like they're kind of showing the breakdown of Nick Blaine. But this episode in particular, they're really trying hard to break down Nick and June. And I I love that he looks at her during that phrase because we've just seen throughout this entire series. I mean, these these two have been through everything. You know, they constantly have people and events trying to break them up and they never do. Like even season four, she goes to Canada. And I think that's why in episode 409, it's so powerful when June and Nick see each other, because I don't think either of them ever thought they'd see each other again. I think, I don't know if they realize until that moment, like how truly powerful their connection and their love is. I agree. I think that's what you see in season four is her pushing that down, thinking I can never see him again. I can't think about him. I refuse to, there's no point. Right. And we Mm -hmm. know without seeing Nick in those scenes after she left Chicago, that there's there's no chance that he ever thinks I'll see her again. I, I would just kill to see the phone call. I know, I know. I kill I know. The phone call where they're like, hey, you want to come see June and, and Holly? <laughs> <laughs> I would kill for that, but yeah. I uh, thought about Nick holding back uh, Serena in the kitchen. And then uh, my head goes immediately to the scene where he holds Fred, Fred back. <laughs> Uh, almost in the same way that is that's really good but uh with serena he's like more he he holds more back Mm -hmm. um because probably she's a woman and he he Mm -hmm. can't be um any kind of uh violence or or nasty towards a woman even though she's like so such a wild person yeah Mm -hmm. yeah but with Fred, he's like, don't giving any shits anymore. Do so. A couple of times. Yeah. And Fred also, um, we hear Fred call Nick's son 7,000 times in yes. the season four yeah. finale. And I noticed it in this episode, even though he's hating on him right now, I think. I know he is hating mm-hmm. on him. Fred is not. Fred is trying to get rid of Nick. He's just married him to Eden, but he's still calling him son. Did he call him son before? Yes, he's called them son yeah, okay. quite a bit. I mean, Thomas not thing. repetitively like that, but yeah, right, he does. Right. <laughs> he does. Anyone else? Stuff? I had oh, yeah. one more. Um, so when Nick finds or hears the bushes rustle when June is outside bleeding out, mm-hmm. before I realized, 
before I realized that there was actually bushes rustling. Yeah. Like and like like I said, I remembered. I was like, "This is it magic that he heard." Yeah. Her? And immediately, I was thinking of um, yes. so the <laughs> Chicago episode in season four where Lawrence yeah. is like, "Oh, does your heart glow?" Right. I was like, "Oh, maybe his heart is glowing." <laughs> That's why he knew Judas. <laughs> Wasn't there a conversation on Reddit where Reddit. Like, oh, was his yes. heart glowing? Yeah, because yeah. like, people were like, "How did he hear? Like, how did he know she was there? Was his heart glowing?" Like, and people I were wish like, I could remember who said that, but somebody mm-hmm. said, "Oh, the heart glow was flickering because she was nearby and in danger." And <laughs> yes, <I> lost, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I laughed but so it's, hard. I mean, it looked a bit like that because he only has the the rustling of the bushes, and yeah. he is looking like he suspects something is going on with her because she he immediately looks a bit worried not yeah. not he's not in the guardian mode that he wants to protect the house it seems he's like suspecting that something is mm-hmm. going on yeah yeah because it's really wrong yeah and then he rushes back and of course he sees her there and then he's uh, like completely freaking out but the the first part is like I thought his heart was glowing. <laughs> this is the first time we see his heart officially glowing. Yeah. <laughs> Magic. I was yeah. just thinking now for some odd reason, we were talking about um, the promotion and um, if like, I, I kind of wondered if Serena knew if Nick had something to do with June's quote unquote kidnapping. But then I was thinking back to the season finale because you guys just mentioned it that Nick holds Fred back so Mm -hmm. Fred already knew that probably Nick had something to do with it but he obviously can't say much because then his house is not going to look in order Mm -hmm. but then when Serena says that in in the table when they're eating about like you know oh you know he's it's so cute how he's worried I think you know that kind of pushes forward to, to what happens in this episode like I just realized that because all she mm-hmm. said was, oh, it's cute that he's worried. She didn't say anything else. Because I was well, initially I was thinking, why would he just take that and go <laughs> with it? But he, he, I think you're right that he already had his own suspicions about there well, being something there. And again, yeah, I don't yeah. think we see the full conversation there. Yeah, right? that, I think that, there was uh, more to it than that. Yeah. yeah. It's just the way the, the, the camera like focuses on Fred and his reaction when he when Serena says that specifically because he was ignoring her the whole time, mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, okay, yep. here we go. But but also, I think he, Fred is just obsessed with June and sees her as his his property, his and he's girl, oblivious. His <laughs> uh, his plaything, and if uh, Nick has her, then she isn't his anymore. So right. that was probably a big part too. Which and that so- doesn't make sense because again in the finale, as we always talk about in season four, <laughs> he's like shocked that Nick and June are still in love. So right. that's a good point that maybe he sees her more so as his plaything yeah. than her and Nick being in love. Mm-hmm. Clearly, he does not get it. Yeah, but it, it like we've talked about many times, it is stunning <laughs> that he has had so much evidence in his face about their love, and he's still like, "What? This is gross." Mm-hmm. He's oblivious. What and the fuck? This is sick. Um, so glad they kissed there instead of what was the kiss on the cheek that was written? Yeah. yeah that just doesn't yep. work. No, it's not Nick and June. <laughs> Somebody, one of them said in an interview, like, I think it was Max. Just like, this it was so, Max. It's so organically like Nick He's, and June. Of course they yeah. kiss. Well, he's about that specific kiss. He said something like, him and Lizzie didn't realize, think, didn't think about in the moment how perverse it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw that too. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said, "Oh, but then we said, let's just go for it." Oh, okay. glad you did. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I had Janine, or I just made a note of this when we were talking about Janine's anger. We don't see Janine's anger all that often, and mm-hmm. she gets angry in this episode, and she gets angry in season four when she's yelling at June in the milk, the milk car in the train. And I hate that scene because Janine's out of line there because June has not done anything wrong because Janine would have done that for Caleb also. Are there any other scenes where she gets angry? You know what? Actually, you know what I thought about though? While you mentioned the milk episode, Mm -hmm. it was in this episode when Janine says that cows don't get married. Yeah. Like I think of her one liners and then I thought of them in the milk car where she's like, don't, I'm not a mushroom. Not a mushroom. That's my favorite. I just thought of like Janine's little like, 
Oh, for Janineisms. Janineisms. Yeah. yeah. Or Janineisms. Um, I love I'm not a mushroom. <laughs> yeah. The anger between Emily and Janine kind of made me think of, you know, that anger between June and, and Janine in season four, you mm-hmm. know, like June trying to tell her, you know, all these, you know, June's like, very pessimist just like Emily in this in this episode and Janine's still trying to be a little bit positive and she wants to stay in Chicago and June's like like what are you doing <laughs> like why are you gonna stay here and like Janine's talking about having another baby and she's mm-hmm. just being herself being you know that's her defense mechanism so mm-hmm. that kind of made me think of those two you know together between this episode and that episode in season four mm-hmm. Um, I don't have something on her being mad, but uh, I wrote down that she's always having this positive outlook at everything. She always thinks that she will be saved in any way by God or whatever. And um, it seems like she always wins with this attitude (laughs) because she does get out again and she um, does get out of Gilead after, uh, at least for a while. (laughs) um but it ends in season four her luck with being recaptured but up until this point um her happy positive outlook really gets her going and it always works as infuriating as it is it does yeah (laughs) i do i love that it like it pisses off emily because it shouldn't be this happy but emily's wrong there it's working for her i have a hard time reconciling the janine that walked into the red center and her breasts of her mm-hmm. arc yeah it it doesn't it doesn't seem like somebody who had that much like attitude and anger would be such a positive like they're and they that... broken yeah like they broke her i think that's what it is i mean you know like because i remember her like when she comes in she's like fuck this shit yeah but then that yeah. person is entirely gone 100 percent gone yeah but forever. i think it's uh it's because mm-hmm. of aunt lydia it's like a stockholm syndrome with lydia or something yeah. like that because she sees her as a mother figure for the first time she has some f- want to look out for her in some kind of weird fucked up way she's always wanted a mother figure i could buy I, that helps me that helps me get there there's, she that. did an inter- in, she did an interview where they asked her about that change that you're talking about, Kate, about Janine, mm-hmm. and um, I think it was in the questions they ask after the episodes. I always forget how they're called. After. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and they asked her about you know that Janine had this fire when she first walked into Gilead, like if that fire had been extinguished, and Madeline Brewer said uh, that she didn't think so. She just thinks that that fire burns differently now. I thought mm-hmm. it was a nice way to kind of like phrase it. It know? is a nice way. It's now. a very Janine way to put it. I love that. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's true. Um, All right. Who else has got stuff? I, yeah. <laughs> the, the baby shower thing that uh, Naomi. Oh, right. Bitchy. Yeah. Yeah. Was bitchy about like she had a much bigger one and Serena's had been so intimate and blah, blah. Uh, and I was thinking that was so funny because Serena actually gets pregnant and gets a real baby. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Naomi actually comes to visit her and give her a kind of a baby shower. And it's like the worst <laughs> thing ever. So she gets the, the baby shower in prison with one person. <laughs> That is, that oh, yeah. is brilliant. So they've gone down from Naomi's <laughs> huge baby shower to Serena's intimate baby shower to Naomi. In prison. In Doesn't prison. she give her like a little baby commander suit? Oh, yeah. Yes. No, I, no, I think those were no, the fans. Yeah, the, the fans. fans. Yeah. Okay. What does yeah. Naomi give her this time? I remember Naomi gave her the um, elephant on a wagon in this last episode, in this last yeah. shower. What does Naomi bring to the prison? I think know? some knitted clothes and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think it was all knitted clothes, like whatever <laughs> they could stuff in their suitcase. Yeah. And then uh, the, the thing that June is so meek there and Serena is like uh, really unhappy that June is like, not talking anymore yeah. and stuff and then two episodes later after June comes fully back uh they are working together and Serena seems really genuinely happy that she has her like as a sparring partner again yeah. and she can riff off of her and uh yeah, yeah. 
Oh, it's fascinating the, the writing it's, between these two. It's the, the only time they really looked like kind of friends. Like yeah. they really could could go on and be friends after whatever happens. But yeah, we know how mm -hmm. that turned out. Um, the big thing about mental health, we, we discussed about the fact that are there mental health uh, doctors out there in Gilead and stuff? Yeah. And then I reminded the fact in season three that they only give uh, Eleanor uh, herbal teas and stuff. So oh, right. And she's no, bipolar, right? There is, right. No, there is no mental, mental health. health. Yeah. But she, June does speak to that doctor in 309. Yeah. Who, I mean, I they mean, are there. But... Mental, yeah. He's not a mental health professional, yeah. but. He's a doctor who like sees. Yeah. Because in that episode, she's like at the end of her rope too. Mm -hmm. And he, so I mean, I think even though they don't have like mental health professionals, I think Nick still was like, I mean, if you just take her to a doctor in and general, discuss her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like her suicidalness, that might help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this plays exactly to the fact that June is actually the first time that she's really giving up and we see the whole circle uh, cycle come back in season three again where she's like she does shit so she just can die at the end yeah, yeah. um yeah. and then in season four where she's literally begging for and being Lindy killed off yeah. yeah so uh, we have that from this moment on we have that at least once <laughs> in every season and it's always when she has um, either Nick not around or her being separated from him by a child bride or and is it also always when she hurts other people like that's how you ultimately get to somebody I think is like you can hurt June as much as you want but once you've hurt Hannah or yeah sure. told the other handmaids in 403 she begs Lydia to let her die basically like mm -hmm. she's suicidal and then seeing nick on the bridge like brought her back to life which and that was right after hannah she saw hannah in the cage and mm -hmm. she gave away the handmade position right yeah mm -hmm. and then she yep. begged aunt lydia to let her die and then mm -hmm. she saw nick and he gave her that spark like he always does mm -hmm. right. once the emily thing with the that she loses her tooth uh, I just thought to season three where she's like having the checkup and the only thing she really has uh, is a uh, high cholesterol. cholesterol. And <laughs> I was like, she started to fucking lose her teeth. I know. So I how is this possible? I mean, maybe she's got lucky, but I, I really expected her to get yes, uh, anything, yeah. something. But I think uh, it's also comical that obviously we're seeing the radiation affect her. And then very shortly, Janine and especially Emily are brought back to be handmaids again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. like the thought process. Yeah. Of Gilead yeah. Just makes no sense. I mean, it is consistent with Gilead's stupidity, but <laughs> yeah. I do think that their health would be showing up a little worse. Like, yeah. I wouldn't want her to be my handmaid for that no. reason. No. <laughs> be like, toxic eggs, toxic yeah. eggs, you know? I oh mean, my God. Yeah. Radioactive eggs. I mean, honestly, yeah. what kind of baby could be born from yeah. those? Um, and the last point uh, before we get to the end where <laughs> Ginger should say something um, <laughs> is the uh, the upcoming sex scene between Nick and Eden. Uh, it's like we see Serena prepare Eden for the big night and uh. I was wondering if it was really her preparing the, the sheet too because we don't get to we get to see her put something on the bed or something like uh, that. There was yeah. something lying there, and I was like, "Is this really just for the first night, or is it uh, for every night, or what?" And she uh, was a hole in it, right? Was that Serena? Yeah. Did, did Serena gave her that thing, or I think it's Gilead yeah. issued, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe if they get a wife, they get this oh, man. thing. So twisted. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering about that because I um it, it was so prominent that there was something on the bed and they talked about this whole stuff and she was like, "Do you know what's happening tonight?" and 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 I was wondering if she was the one bringing that thing up or yeah. 
I just find it so she crazy how they're trying about- to create a loveless society. It's yes. like, isn't that the greatest gift that God can give you is love, right? right. They're preaching no. all this other things in the Bible. And then they're like, love is death. I mean, they yeah. hate it. It goes, I mean, <laughs> it goes to miserable. show that they Everyone. literally do yeah. not read the Bible. Like they literally don't read it because right. it's like the people who like to pick and choose Bible mm-hmm. verses. Mm-hmm. Like here you have Nick reading the love is patient, love is kind Bible verse, which is what God's <laughs> love is and what it's supposed to be and what it is between him and June. And they're literally getting punished by people who are using the Bible against them and Mm -hmm. who are taking out everything that God preaches. Right. So like, they don't want love between a man and a wife. They want a blanket with a hole in it. You know, it's (laughs) like, I mean, there's, it's so backwards. I had a little thing before I go to ginger. It's uh, the parallel between how you see the wives who have everything and they're privileged and how miserable they all are versus the unwomen in the colonies that literally are dying and they still manage to have, you know, these instances of happiness and love. Yeah, they're happy. Um, no, my last <laughs> thing I was going to say was I, I love the speech that June gives to the baby at the end. Because I feel like, again, like with everything in this show, with, you know, the way the first season ended and then what we continue to see in seasons three and four, like it just, it just proves, like it goes to show that everything she's doing is in the name of her daughters. Like her yeah. mission to get Holly out and she does her mission since the very beginning was to get Hannah out which which she's still working on. She never but then I think, and then we see, we just see the journey continue in season four and now into season five where it's becoming even bigger than just getting her daughters out. Now it's about fighting back so that her daughters have a world to live in that is not Gilead. So I just right. love how they keep like reinforcing that and tying that into these episodes as we go along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like her mother was doing. Yeah. yeah. About that, I, I'm really sad about the fact that uh, June says to uh, Holly in her belly that she will do everything now to get her out. And she tries a bit, but she just can't succeed because she has such limited options. At one point, she even gives up and she, she starts to gather people that should care for the baby when she's not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, that, that was really sad. And I'm so happy that also Rita really. and Nick pulled through and got it fixed. Yeah. yeah. But again, out. like a, there, there you have the love is patient Bible verse coming into play again, where it talks about being selfless. And, you know, I know, I know June at times can be selfish, but I mean, mm-hmm. here she is being selfless as a mother. She's doing what yeah. a mother should be doing as putting her children in front of her needs, you know, mm-hmm. which is again, her mission in this entire journey on, on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and even serena goes back on that even when she helps briefly lets her escape or lets holly escape she then tries to pull her back in like she's a bad mom she's never yeah she can't mom. put her selfishness aside the way yeah. a mother should the other thing that i had was um it's a little detail when you know fred says what man doesn't want a son and we know obviously that he never gets to meet his son so fuck you fred (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay i think that's a wrap on our deep dive into season two episode five thank you for hanging out with us and we look forward to doing season two episode six with you next week bye Bye. you know i think about us the three of us what we could be i think about it all the time please it's terrible no it's not i know june she's my friend i care about her how's your day going You look pretty. Thanks. I wore it just for you. Our father's a driver named Nick. He helped me to survive. Yes, you can, because I can't lose you. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. What about you? Your girlfriend is a badass. 